Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's the Voices of the Ecclesia. It's the last day of September. We thank God for his faithfulness and that he has brought us this far. Um, so today I'm like a broken record. We are back to Rema Feast. And I'm going to keep coming back here as I get the content and the things that I'm learning because I love to share with you. So there's Pastor Poju, absolutely amazing man of God. I even followed him now on social media so you can find him. I think it's Covenant Nation or something like that, but he's absolutely amazing. Very deep man. Very, I loved it. He was very chilled, but he brought the word. Now, this is what I caught from there. First of all, he said that we all have a prophetic destiny, which is true. We all have a prophetic destiny, which goes back to the message of last week of the Rema word. We all have a prophetic destiny. So for me, my prophetic destiny is, is a Joseph. So you need to locate what is your prophetic destiny. But he said that a prophetic destiny is entered in by the Holy Spirit. So it's revealed by the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know what your prophetic destiny is, the, you need to pray. You need to ask God and God reveals himself. You know, in Bible school, we were taught that Christianity is the I think one of the only religions where God reveals himself. God is not trying to hide. And I remember we've unpacked that, you know. God is not trying to hide from you. God is not trying to take away from you. God created you. God loves you. So you have a prophetic destiny, so you need to go and find out in prayer. Ask him through the Holy Spirit what that destiny is. He also said that East Africa is the next gate. Like the voice of East Africa is going to be heard next. That means we need to prepare. Why I think I keep going back to these Rema Feast messages is because I feel that the word was a foundation. Whatever was shared in those 16 messages is a foundation because we're the East Africans to propel us into what God wants. So it's like a launching pad. Like you stand on it and then you run and it's God's Rema word. He's releasing a word. So it's going to launch you into what you need to into what you need to to get next um i felt as well it was a reminder of what god is about so m most of the messages were about envy love forgiveness what else about the body of christ so i think god is telling us remember but it brought me to something else as he was speaking god's plan i don't know whether i did a video here or i or but i know i spoke about it at church at mavuno marketplace movement there's a day i went and i told him let me tell you god is saying go back to god's plan and i love that i love the way he put it that he was saying and i think that's the same thing i had spoken to the people at the church is that sometimes we are praying for our plan like many times in the things that we're asking god it's our plan we may not come from, a, we're not coming from a bad place, but we're just thinking, these are the things I want. But then I remember Pastor Simon Baby taught us to pray and he told us at the end of prayer, you say that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because there's a will of God. If you look at Romans 12, I think the last verse, the last um, Romans 12, 2, at the last verse it says, so that you may know God's good, perfect and pleasing will. There's a will of God. There's a perfect will of God. I remember my friend Daniel Macau used to say, you could be praying for a car and God was to give you the factory that produces cars. You see, that's the thing. So what I'm also urging and I pick from this message is God's plan. In everything that you're praying, you have to ask God for his plan. Because I can assure you, that's when I have a 155,000 percent his plan is better than your plan that is a fact why his ways are not our ways he created us he talks about us he talks about us in psalm 139 how he knit us together in in our mother's womb how he every day before it was written he knew the day you know he, he was very specific when i look even at the human body my god god has a plan you know, my I'm a grandmother now and I'm so excited about being a grandmother. My granddaughter just makes me come alive. I come alive. I cannot even imagine how much life is in me. But the thing is, because of my daughter's breastfeeding journey, I was shocked. You know, people say there's no God. Anyway, let me get stick to my story. I was shocked that we we're, were trying to keep uh, people not from to come and visit her. And then we were at the pediatrician one day and then he said, no, when a child is breastfeeding, there's nothing that can affect the child. I was like, what are you talking about? And he said that apparently if the child gets like a cold and, and starts breastfeeding, <laughs> a signal is sent to the brain. Oh my good Lord. To start producing whatever medicinal, I might not put it in the right doctor language, but whatever the, or antibodies the child needs to fight what is in their body. What is that? Just, oh my God. What? That 
even breastfeeding is not just breastfeeding. That the child, the brain, I, I don't even know. That there's a message sent that says this child needs this. And therefore it begins to produce those antibodies and the child will not be sick. I mean, I can't even explain that. That is God. If God went into such lengths to create these systems, structures for us as his people, that God doesn't have a plan, he has a plan. And his plan is better than your plan. So what you need to do is focus and find his plan and pray his plan into being. And then agree. Because I, th I feel like sometimes when God wants to execute his plan, we start with the stories. We start with what we feel we know. And, and I think it's very true. It's a very good message for us because we are so intellectual. We are so, it's all about me, me, myself and I. It's my life. It's my life and it can be taken away in two hours. Like, that doesn't even make sense. And the Bible says, I don't know where it is in the scripture, they'll find it. Where, where the man was building for him a storehouse. He said, I'm building, he had harvested, so he's building a storehouse. And God is saying, you fool. Today, your, today, today, life, your life is ending today. God forbid, you fool. Good Lord. How is it your life and you can't even control if you're here in the next minute? You can't. It's God, God is the one who is giving you life. He gives you the power to be. He is the one doing that. He is orchestrating that. So in, in, we've become so independent. So it's all about me. I'll do what I want. I'm too intellectual. I'm too clever. You know, every time I go pray for people, now it's not so I digress, but when I go to pray for people, for people in hospital, when you visit hospitals, when you come out with a different perspective, I always come out very quiet because of the pain people are in. People are sick. So there's nothing about your ability. Every ability you have, God has given you. Give you the ability to wake up. Give you the ability to walk. Give you the ability to breathe. When you see or hear the sicknesses that people have, where? Where was that? God's plan. It is better than your plan. You must pray for God's plan. And I wrote here, Lord, allow me to follow and flow in your prophetic plan. Me, I want to add the word prophetic. What is God's prophetic plan? And then Psalm 106, um, verse 1 to 22 in the Amplified Version, the MC. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to pick up what I picked up. Number one, we've got to praise the Lord. You know, there's a song that's really been ministering to my spirit. I think it's called Be Praised. I think it's Todd somebody and Kimberly somebody. My goodness, that song, it's just ministering to me. Because first of all, it talks about that everything you do is good. You do all things well. And then it's talking about when I think about the battles that you've brought me through. Be praised. So praise God. This is all a summary from Psalm 106, verse 1 to 22 in the Amplified Version. Praise the Lord. Give thanks because God is good. And then his mercy and kindness endure forever. My goodness, the, the mercies, the things that God extends to us every day, every moment of every day. These mercies are not seasonal. They are every day, every day. And I remember I used to go to, to Marigiti to shop. I had a restaurant. So I loved going to there on Monday mornings. I'd be there by four, but I loved it. First of all, they used to greet each other and say, to wake up is a miracle. I'm like, who are these people? Oh, that's how they greet each other. To wake up is a miracle. The, to recognize that go back to my scripture justice treating others fairly and i just kept thinking africa kenya there's so much injustice and and in this scripture is addressing all who do right and who have a right standing with god and it says favor us deliver us and grant us salvation and that there is a welfare for god's chosen i was like wow undeniable there are blessings that God has bestowed on his chosen. If they are not flowing your way, you better decree it from this scripture. And then rejoice in the kingdom of God. Glory in his heritage. We have sinned. Our fathers did not appreciate your miracles. And I said, do we appreciate God and his daily miracles? I think we start a gratitude jar or a gratitude journal for the next four months. September is over now. So it's October, November, December. Start a, even January. Start a gratitude journal and say, see what the Lord has done. 
I find like as a people, we move on too quickly. God answers this one, we move to the next one. We don't even remember to say thank you. We've gone. We've moved on. To, okay, God, now this is what I need. Take time. And that's why even I love that we have a retreat in November. And you, I'm not, it's a plug. Yes, you can come to my retreat or you can have yours. But we must retreat because we don't take time to stop. And in the stopping, I'm amazed when I start. And usually I do it with my phone because my calendar is usually my phone. I'm amazed when I start. I'm like, wow, all these things come to life. God has done all these things. He's kept me for another year. He's provided for another year. He's done this. He's done that. Oh, my goodness. When I realize it's the 12th annual Unstuck Forum, I'm like, oh, my God. And then there's something I had. I knew here there was something. It says they did not earnestly remember the multitude of God's mercies. And then I looked up the word earnestly. It says with sincere and intense conviction. And even added the word seriously. And I wrote here, both Pastor T and Apostle Dennis, they kept saying they are on the platform of Rema Feast by the mercies of God. You, in your life, what can you say? You're in by the mercies of God. Because the Bible says they did not earnestly remember the multitude of your mercies. Are we remembering the multitude of God's mercies? His mercies are new every day. Everything you have, it's by his mercy and by his grace. Every place you have been chosen, it is mercy and his grace. Every door that has opened, it is his mercy and his grace. I keep telling people, you have things that somebody else is on a fast about. You have a spouse, somebody's fasting for a husband. You have a child, somebody's fasting for a child. You have children, somebody's fasting for children. You have a home, somebody's fasting over a home. You have a car, somebody's fasting over a car. I mean, come on, guys. I feel like this message is in the middle of September, but it takes stock. Ali on, he said, your fathers, the fathers did not appreciate my miracles. May we not be a generation that does not appreciate the miracles of God. Let us appreciate them. And let us speak about them. Wow. And then he says, your mercies or loving kindness, nor imprint them on their hearts. So he's continuing. They didn't remember God's mercy. They didn't remember his kindness. They didn't imprint it. And then I thought about how he says in his word that he'll put his, his word, his law on our hearts. Hmm. Remember God's mercy. Remember God's miracles, remember God's loving kindness, remember God's favor. It is very, very, very important. I even wrote there, oh my. They were rebellious and they provoked the Lord. At sea, it says, Exodus 14, 21 is another reference that was given there. And then I love this. Nevertheless, he saved them as he saves us for his name's sake. I'm telling you, I was reading the scripture and saying, wow. Can you imagine God saves us for the sake of his name? <laughs> they were rebellious. And they provoked the Lord even at that sea. That, they were provoking the Lord as they crossed that desert. As he's taking them out of captivity. Like we do. We provoke God by our language. By, by what we feel is our ability. All ability is God given. All ability is God given. It says, nevertheless, he saved them like he saves us for the sake of his name. You know, I was amazed. He saves us to preserve his name. And his promises, I felt, and his rema word, his vision and purpose over our lives. I have to say it again. He saves us, me and you, to preserve his name, to preserve his promises over us, even in this word and in the rema word that he has released for his vision and his purpose over our lives and to prove the righteousness of his divine character. Oh my God, where's my tabloid today? To prove the righteousness of his divine character and that, his might may, that he might make his mighty power known. This is God's mercy and love towards us. The same God yesterday, today and forever. I mean, I just love it. 
And you know, as they talk about character, and I think I talked about it, yeah. This, I don't know what I was going through some about two, three weeks ago. And I was like, wow. And I, I said, okay, God, you know, especially when you're tired, God, speak to me. And what he told me is you need to trust my character. You need to trust me and you need to trust my character. That's what we need to do. You have to trust God and trust in his character, trust in his nature, trust that he's a merciful God, trust that nevertheless he will save you for the sake of his name, trust that he, trust that he wants to prove the righteousness of his divine character. He's the same yesterday, to get, uh, today and forever. He's unchanging, he's powerful. He has a plan and his plan for you is better than your plan. That's what he's saying. And that he's powerful. And then the miracle of the Red Sea is explained. And he saved them through the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them. Yeah, this is what I wanted to say. He saved them through the hand, or he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them. Now there I was like, my God, my God. Now I have to go into prayer. You see, God has to redeem us and save us from those who hate us. How amazing is that? But I think the one who hates you the most is Satan. And I think that's what that's the reference. He saved them from the one who hated them, the one who wanted to destroy them. And therefore, I went into prayer. So let me go into prayer at this point. It says, Lord God Almighty, thank you that you save us from those who hate us and especially from the enemy, from Satan and from those that enslave us. And I brought it closer to Kenya and to Africa. We decree and release this scripture over Kenya and Africa, over Kenya and Africa. Release your people from those who hate us, those who oppress us, those who take advantage of us, and those who enslave us. Deliver Kenya and Africa as a continent from all of this. Deliver us, Lord. And verse 11 says, not a single adversary was left. And verse 12 says, then Israel believed his words, his Rema word, trusting in relying on his word, his Rema word, and they sang his praise. Then verse 13 is just speaking to what I'm talking about, God's plan. They did not earnestly wait for his plan to develop. You know some things when I read in the Bible, they make me sad. They, 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 <laughs> oh, they said they testified, but they forgot his works. And they did not earnestly, there's that word again, sincerely, intensely, with conviction and not casually wait for his plans to develop regarding them. I am here today to beseech you, my brothers and sisters, to ask God for his plan, to wait for his plan to develop. His plan is developing. His plan is unfolding. His plan is processing. Don't be like these Israelites who did not honestly wait for God's plan to develop. Let the plan come to, to fullness. Allow it. Be sincere. Be intense and have conviction that God has come to save us and that he will do it and that he has a plan. I think the first conviction I feel very strong in my spirit is for you to understand that God has a plan. <laughs> he has a plan. He created you with intention, with conviction, with focus, with sincerity, with passion, with love. He has a plan. We cannot honestly not believe that he has a plan. And even in the things that don't make sense, even in the things that don't make sense, there's a plan. I want to pray, but I also want to end on this note. I don't know why, but whenever things drop in my spirit, you know, I know the Holy Spirit has dropped them. But I was thinking one of the hardest things I've ever done or has happened to me, I feel, in my life is when my, my dad passed away. And, you know, you go through the different stages of anger, of grief, of unbelief. But I remember in one of those processes, the Lord said, Pastor Angie, you've had your dad for 82 years. Oh, true. Probably I wanted him to live till 102 or something, but I had him for 82 years. And that's amazing because he 
Then I think back, because that's where I'm so... He did have his own father. His father died when he was two. And you've had yours for 82 years. So as much as you want to blame God, that was me now, and I'm sure I'm speaking to somebody out there, you can't, because he gave him to you. And it was his plan. And you know, I always think that, sometimes I tell you too many things, but um, I always think that even his accident, because he had an accident uh, around 40-something, and that accident was supposed to destroy him. You see, that's God's plan. Now I can say that. It's true. I've sat, I've studied. It was God's plan because if my dad had died at that time, all our lives, now me and my siblings would have turned out to be very different. So you see, there's a plan. I, I don't know why he had the accident, but I know that God's hand was there. I know that my grandmother was a crazy intercessor. Shushu used to pray till we have to pretend we're asleep so that she doesn't carry us to her prayers and her church. Honestly, children are so foolish. Anyway, it's because she used to go to church like medicine, M morning, lunchtime, and evening. So imagine we're so foolish. We're playing, then we know it's her time to go to church. We all black out on the bed. Then now when she goes, first, even before she's reached the corner, we're already awake. But I believe in intercession, you see? That's why I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I'm all over the place, but whenever I'm all over the place, I'm speaking to somebody. You need to intercede. His, his mom had been gone for so many years when he had an accident, but I always feel she saved him. It is her intercession. Her intercession went ahead of her. So even like right now, I don't know why I feel like somebody's looking at their children all day. These children, I don't even know. Pray for them. Prayer will come God's plan and pray for God's plan and stop. Oh, pray for God's plan. And then on the flip side of that is allowing even your children and the people to get enter God's plan. Let us enter into rest and let us give people freedom. There's a plan. God has a plan. Heavenly Father, you started by saying that everybody has a prophetic destiny and that we enter our prophetic destiny via the Holy Spirit. And even from the Rema word of God, from the spoken word of God, we enter destiny, Lord. And then you went into this Psalm 106 that is telling us that we must earnestly understand, see, recognize, and decree, declare the mercies of God every day and how kind he has been to us and that we must take time to stop and to give him thanks. And then you've said that you save us for, for yourself. It is to preserve your name. It is for the sake of God that you do the things that you do. And then you say that you will take us, you will snatch us out of the hands of the enemy. And I went into this prayer that, Lord, do this for Kenya, where we have reached, Lord. Kenya, Africa, we need you to snatch us out of the hands of the enemy. We need you to destroy the oppressors. We need you to destroy them with finality. The Bible says not a single adversary was left so that your people can prosper. Sometimes I feel like, like in Kenya, and Africa, like there's a lid on us, Lord Jesus. And we need to get this lid off us, get the oppressive hand of the enemy off us, Lord, as individuals, as a nation, as nations, as communities, as families, in marriages, in relationships. Ah, in the marketplace, in our finances. Get the lid off us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we worship and bless and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. That was a really all over the world, all over the place message. But I always know that message is speaking to somebody and, and everybody needed to hear that message. And since I've just been speaking about Rema Feast, Rema Feast 2024, please give me your comments, give me your takeouts. What did you learn? What did you take out? What spoke to you? Somebody else talked about a turning point. What turned? What changed? What revelation was brought to sight so that we can discuss it? And as I keep unpacking the other messages, I'm coming back. We are going to unpack this word. And I'm, you're going to watch Feast <laughs> 2024 because it's a now word for a now season. God bless you and love you so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.